Welcome to my lecture online. Now here we have a very interesting problem from the JE main problem set in physics dealing with free fall. And actually I've never quite seen anything like it. It's actually a bit of a challenging problem. So let's read it and see what it entails. A stone is dropped from the top of the building. When it crosses a point 5 meters below the top, another stone starts to fall from a point 25 meters below the top. Both stones reach the bottom of the building simultaneously. The height of the building is, and they make it a little bit easier by letting us take g equals to 10 meters per second squared. They give us four possible answers, and they did not give us a diagram. So I put a diagram on there so it would be a little bit easier to visualize what's happening. So we have the height of a building. We don't know what height is. That's what we're looking for. And we drop a stone from the very top. And when it reaches a point 5 meters below the top, so when it's dropped 5 meters, a second stone is dropped 25 meters below the top, and both stones hit the ground at the same time. What is the height of the building? So the way to work that would be as follows. Let's start the problem from this point onward, and notice that at this point, this, ball, this stone already has a velocity, going downward because it's dropped 5 meters. Now notice that if the acceleration is 10 meters per second square, after one second the ball will drop 5 meters because that's the average velocity for the first second and so therefore the initial velocity would be 10 meters per second for the ball one after one second. After one second it will have dropped 5 meters. Now with that initial velocity and this rock dropping from this point which is 25 meters below the top, they both hit the bottom at the same time. So what we can do is as follows. We can say that the height dropped for ball one is going to be equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half g t squared. So the initial velocity times time plus half the acceleration times time squared. When we plug in some numbers, we get y1 is equal to that would be 10t plus 5t squared. So that will be the total distance traveled by rock 1 from this point onward. Now we can do the same thing for rock 2. We can say that y2 is equal to, that would be 1 half gt squared, because there's no initial velocity at this point, and since g is 5, we can say that y2 uh, is 10, I should say, so 1 half times 10 would be 5 t squared. So this is the height fallen by rock 1 and this is the height fallen from rock 2 from this point onward and from this point onward. Now we know that this rock is dropped 25 meters below the top so we subtract 5 from that. That means that y1 is equal to y2 plus 20. y1 is 20 more than y2. So what we could do is we could replace y1 by y2 which is y2 equals y1 minus 20. So that means that this cannot be written as, instead of y1, we write, let's see here, y2 plus 20, or y2 is equal to y1 minus 20. Yeah, we can replace this one. So we can write this as y2 plus 20. I guess we don't need this one. We just need that one. Equals 10t plus 5t squared. Moving the 20 across, we get y2 is equal to minus 20 plus 10t plus 5t squared. So now we have two equations for y2, and we can solve those simultaneously by setting them equal to each other. So now we can say, on the left side, we have minus 20 plus 10t plus 5t squared equals this equation, which is 5 t squared, and notice that right away on both sides we have a 5 t squared which cancels out, so this becomes 0. We have minus 20 plus 10 t equals 0, 10 t equals 20, t equals 2. In other words, two seconds have elapsed from the time that this rock is dropped and from the time that this rock reaches this point in time. Two more seconds before both of the rocks are now down. To find out what y2 is equal to, we say y2 is equal to 5 times 2 squared, which is 4 times 5, which is 20. In other words, y1, which is this height right here, 
That's y1. y1 equals 20 meters. And since it's dropped 25 meters below the top of the building, at 20 plus 25, that gives us 45 meters. And notice one of the answers is indeed 45 meters, which is answer A. And that is how we can work out somewhat quickly the answer to that problem. Can we do this in three minutes? That would be pretty tough, but this is the way you want to approach it. Although there's actually a quicker way to do this problem. So if you want to see the quicker way to do the problem, stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.